Hey fam, you know, we're, I'm always trying to uh, give a little advice about how we can, you know, better ourselves as a collective group of people and which starts us doing something individually. And what I've realized in terms of our community and this in terms of us, period, is that we have to start with our dysfunctional families. Most of our families are so damn crazy um, that that's going to be the hardest um, uh, anchor to overcome us and for us to uh, get some focus here. So we're going to have to start right in our family. Most of our families are dysfunctional, um, uh, incestuous, uh, disrespectful, abusive, and um, just downright negative. We have sisters and brothers that basically, um, like they say in the last days and times, they basically hate each other. You have mothers and daughters that are at war with each other, fathers and sons. Um, this is a problem, y'all. This is a problem. Not only is it prophecy in scripture, but it's definitely a sign of our doom. If we cannot have some cohesiveness with the people that we belong to, the people that, the clan that we come from, we cannot extend this community or this family feeling out into our community. And then our communities are fragmented. And they are only fragmented because of the disrespect, um, the uh, dysfunctional way in which we are raising our children and the way we just live it. First of all, you know, it is nothing wrong with um, picking up uh, picking up your act. There's really nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with basically trying to be decent. Um, and keeping it real, keeping it scully, keeping it a hundred, ain't got nothing to do with being ignorant and being stupid. Because most of us are confusing the two. Um, anytime you got young people who will beat an, another young man because he's an honor student, because he can read, because he get good grades, y'all beat the shit out of him because you a stupid ass. This is crazy. This young man might be the one who discovered a cure for cancer, which we all dying from, or discovered a cure for AIDS, which we leading the United States and every other population group with. We're very reckless with our sex. You know, and then we'll make up excuses for it. Well, she just, he just a man, and she just, she a woman. She just, we have no moral fortitude, um, no testicular fortitude, and no pussy uh, fortitude. We cannot seem to be able to control our genitals. We have people in prominent positions that are out here screwing strippers, and then the majority of the men folk. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm going to say majority because only a handful of you brothers out here that I really respect and I see y'all. And at least I see you want to live up to that standard. And for those that's out here saying, you know, oh, oh somebody is single and they can do whatever they want to do. You know, that's what I mean. We are morally bankrupt because to whom much is given, much is required. And if you out here want to put yourself in a position of leadership, you can't be out here fucking these hoes. You can't be out here sticking your penis in everybody that you see. And because you single and that makes sense. See, the moral compass is on empty. And I don't care who you are. I don't care what role you play. If that is okay for you, for somebody that want to lead your children, want to start, um, want to give lectures and stuff about uh, how women should act and how they should be treated and how the brothers are mistreating them and uh, this, that, and the other. And then you go and narcissistically pick out somebody that you know is not evenly yoked with you. And you screw them. And then they tell. And then the majority of niggas in the community say, ain't nothing wrong with that. This is what's wrong with black people. We got some fucking problems. And unless we want to address our moral uh, filthiness, 
And I'm not saying it's like, um, you can put me on the side of something and I'm so clean. I'm not saying that. But first of all, I don't play with God's people. And I'm not in a position to lead. I'm not in a position to lead. I can advise, but I'm not going to put myself in a position of leadership with all these goddamn weaknesses that I have. And if I do, I'm going to tell you straight up what they are. Because you can ask me. And I won't get on a TV show and say I'm celibate when I know I'm not. I'll never do some shit like Bishop Eddie Long and uh, 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 talk about gay people and then find out that I'm sitting up here trying to undercover have relationships. I'm not going to play that type of shit. I'm going to tell you who I am. And either you accept me for who I am or you don't. And it's just that simple. But all this dirty shit, and we're willing to talk about people's sexuality and people's this, that, the other, but we give people a pass uh, that are supposed to be educated and leading by example, and we give them a pass and talk about the bitch that he screwed like everything is her fault, but the person that's in prominent position, he, he he's okay. He gets a pass. Black people, stop the shit. Wake up. We at war on all fronts. I can't trust anybody that will lie to me, that won't have any accountability, To but you want me to send you money? What the fuck is wrong with y'all? You got Tommy Sotomayor over here taking money, and every time I look around, he in some different kind of uh, place. Does anybody... What happened to the movie he was supposed to make? Do, what, do, do any of you niggas uh, check... Oh, now you just want to talk about them. You know what? That's why so many niggas went to Jonestown and end up drinking the Kool-Aid. Because we are the most irresponsible thinking people. But yet we're brilliant. But we've become so lazy mentally and spiritually and emotionally. And it's letting lead me to believe that how much has slavery really taken out of us? Has it taken all of our will to fight? Even for ourselves and our families and our loved ones? Has slavery done that damn good of a job on us, people? I hope not. Because I got grandbabies coming up. And I might not live, I might not be here in the fight, but I want them to see a better America than I saw. And don't you want your grandbabies to see a better America than you experienced? Because it's a fight. And every generation has got to pay his own price. I thank you for listening. And I hope we step up our game and stop making excuses. So many excuses for people that should know better. People that put themselves in leadership positions, they better lead. God damn it. And don't play with God's people. Because I'm going to tell you something. The wrath of God ain't nothing to play with. And if you can't lead God's people, don't play with them. Thank you for listening. And have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.